Atran is our hometown talent and treasure. Coming here from South Vietnam in the middle of the night, getting on a boat with her two young children and husband. My father was a wealthy rice merchant, and I was the only child. And um, I was raised by my father with a household of servants. Uh, we have housekeepers, cook, gardeners, sofa, thing in that nature. And then in 1975, when the communists took over, um, my life changed drastically. Um, the life that I used to know is just about to be coming the distant memories because I have to leave everything. I have to just about to leave everything in order for me to escape and for the freedom. Decided to um, tell me that I need to get married uh, in order for me to um, escape Vietnam. The reason what for was your reaction? Um, I, you know, because my father and I, uh, at that time, we've gone through so much, um, so much already, and I, I'm, I'm not going to really um, questioning my father. At that moment, I trust my father no best, and when he made the decision with the best my with my best interest in mind, that because see, I grew up in the 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 culture and the family with privilege, and he cannot see that how can I survive because I always have somebody taking care of me. So he thought that um, the, uh, the husband would be a good um, person that, um, to take care of me. Um, so I instead of uh, the, with the lavish the dowry, my husband, uh, my father just um, when my husband gave his word to promise to my father that he would care, love, and protect me, his only child. So on August 29, 1978, at midnight, a stranger came to our hut, because at, at the time that we hide out. And so just, you know, for us to pick up our belonging and follow him. You know, we have to leave everything behind, leave everything behind in order for us to make our escape. And we just have any anything that we can carry in our hands and on our backs, and, and of course two young children, two young children too, and one and a half and twenty eight days, and needless to say, there was not much room for anything else. And so, did you walk? Did you take a car? Where did you go next? I want to 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 walk you through the the moment that I made our escape. It was a very dark at night. And the, the man, he moved so fast, and my husband managed to keep up with him, but I, on the other hand, I traveled belong, behind them. And I remember hear the sound of the cricket, the dreadful sound of the cricket chipping. Mm -hmm. And then when I walk through the wood and into the field, I can hear the cracking of the, the branches and the, the rustling of the dry leaves. Oh, it, I, I was so scared, and I, I remember I held on to my son, and, and at that moment that I just so terrified, I held my son closer into my heart, and I whispered to him, I said, shh, just to give him some, just to say to him that absolute, his absolute silence is very necessary. And then I remember that I, I, I thought that I screamed out. I said, is anybody out there? But the word is just trapped deep down in my, in my throat. And I was, um, I was so scared, but then I have to run as fast as I could. And when I get into the, the how river. Long did, how long did you run for? I, I don't recall. I know that it just almost the time, it just stands still. And then like the time is, forever and at that moment and um, I, I thought I'd never get into the place that I need to be but somehow I did get to the river and at the river there it was an old man who was waiting to transport us to the larger boat. As you know we, we gamble our life for freedom at the middle of the night, we follow a stranger to an unknown locations. 
and at that moment, we knew exactly what we run a we running a waveform, but we had absolutely no idea what we running toward. Wow. But yet we venture out to an unknown world on an uncertain journey. Did you get to say goodbye to your father? No. You know, every day is, um, we make the point to say goodbye because we never know when that they come. And the actual day that um, when I left, no, I didn't have the chance to say goodbye to my father. And so you got to the river, and the old man took you to another boat. Yes, and on that boat, it was a crowd, very crowded boat. Um, when we were on board, my husband and I, we would get separated because the force of the people, they elbowed, they pushed me toward the bottom of the boat when I have no, absolutely no idea where my husband and my older son was. And you still had your youngest. I, I had my baby and my infant son with me. And um, I was terrified and um, panicked because I didn't know if or when would I see them again. And, uh, and then when, but the, the, the thing is, um, I was very, very sick on the boat. And at the um, moment that um, they brought me up to the deck to get some fresh air, later on my husband told me that when he saw me, he thought I had died. And the stranger just about to toss my coat overboard. And he didn't know where our son was. But then I woke up, I regained my consciousness when I was on the rescue boat and was taken to the refugee camp of the island of Malaysia. The boat, um, three days and three nights. However, one and a half day um, out at sea, the boat engine died. All that we could do was praying. I remember um, uh, until today, um, I still terrified of the angry sea because I remember the rusty wind and the, the angry, strong way beating, granting no mercy on that old fishing boat. Um, I, I have not say, shared that with the too many people, but um, until today, um, I still remember the haunting crying from my son because I don't have because the, because I was so sick and I don't have any food and drink and I cannot even nurse my um, my son and I remember that he cried until he's so exhausted and he fell asleep. And when in the on the rescue boat, uh, the nun gave handed to me my son. I think that my angel have granting my son and my and me giving us a life, a change to a a chance to do something good because um, I, I can watch it. my son cry to, to sleep or cry to exhaust himself and then I holding the baby and I afraid to check because I thought he, he might be dead. So scary. Yeah. It's, um, but now I'm here, um, life is good. And your son, your old sons? My, my older son is with my husband, and I didn't, I didn't know much, and the, the, uh, the time that on, on the boat, and, but then we get um, on to the refugee camp, we stay there for 15 months, and our livelihood depend on the United Nations and their relief effort. Mm -hmm. And 15 months later, we live a life of a, 
of, of a, a, a dismal life of a citizen of no country. You know, we share our living space with the um, stranger. And we sleep on the long bed made of wood from the made out of the shipwreck in breath. Oh, they are at big and my infant sons at the time. Um, you, you know, to, to share the living space with um, people that different, but we invaded the, the, the Rats Island because that was the, the, mm, the desert island. And then now we, as a refugee, we came in, we make a home, um, you know, temporary home for us. Um, now, when I came here, um, didn't I didn't speak, speak any English. Didn't no. speak any English. Uh, with my husband, my two kids, and had only $20 in our pocket. And when we, we thought that, um, do you know how when you're thinking about you come to America and you said, oh, the land of opportunity and the, with the, you know, the promised land, the street paved with gold, you know, with all the excitement come to new country. Um, I, I, and remember that the, the terrifying when we get out of the airplane, because um, when, before we left, uh, the people told us that our sponsor will be waiting, greeting us at the airport. Now, um, see, uh, where I come in from, when they said that, and i imagining, wow, when I get there, my sponsor, the ten women, beautiful women, light up, just greeting me with the open arms. But it was not the case. When I came, and there was light too, and I looked and asked, far that I can see, but I don't know what I'm looking for. And I didn't speak any English, so I cannot even ask him for help or where do I must go in order to waiting for them to come. But then it now become turned into anxiety and terrifying fears. And especially when at the airport, I love Americans but they seem to be very, very busy. <laughs> and they're moving in all directions. And nobody really made the eyes contact with us. And you know, at, at that moment, I feel so alone and so invisible. And that moment, I, prom I make a promise to myself, I will learn to speak English, and I will learn American culture. Because never again I will be in this this predicament, never again I will be invisible, and never, never again I will be in the position that hopelessness. So about two hours later, when I was sponsor, uh, I, I saw the, how do I know that my sponsor, there's two most beautiful women uh, in the crowd, and they have the piece of paper, and the piece of paper said Quang Hung Tran, which was my husband's name. So I was released from my terrifying fears, and I ran to them, but I come to the sudden stop because th the feeling of rejection just like consumed me because I said, what if they just take a look at us? And if what they don't like what they saw, what would they do? We don't look anything like them. And so I... And I stop, and then I look at my two young children and a very distressful husband, and I summon all the courage within me. I ran to them, and that moment I cried, just like a lost child. Finally reunited with her parents by some miracle. So that doesn't matter how long I have lived in this country, that moment, it definitely mm -hmm. engraved it in my head. Do you still keep in touch with your sponsor? Yes, family? yes, yes. Um, I, I, uh, I have four children, and when my children get married, um, they, they are not all come in, but you know, one or two come in. Mm -hmm. And they are a very, uh, they are elderly. Uh, some of them have passed away, and some still, um, healthy and yes we do from time to time we we talk because I I feel the need to let them know that their effort has uh, you know just to brought our family to come to this country they not just free us from from our dismal life 
but they also have done such a, um, a great, um, great thing because now I have four beautiful, successful um, business as well that personally, and I have six grandchildren. What you went through in South Vietnam and the escape and and all you went through with your husband and children, um, how have you turned that around into helping the community and working with others to empower others? Today, I consider I have everything, but I certainly um, have advanced from the place that I have everything and came to the point that I have nothing and I have something, and then now I have something greater than something. And, you know, again, I'm talking about I how proud I have about my children and my grandchildren. And for me to come to this country and um, didn't speak any English and to uh, have a, a, a college degree and have all, all different kinds of personal development and training, um, I, I think that life is good and it is a, a, a and it's good in the sense that every opportunity to come to my way, I embrace it and I make the best out of everything. I don't know if uh, in our conversations sometime later, um, I, I meant uh, before that I mentioned to you that I have, um, I came to this country and I start English as second language. And it took me six years from the time, that time for me to get my associate degree. And it took me another four years to get my uh, bachelor degree and you know and I I, I, I think it's uh, funny but is it not funny I poke fun of myself I said I'm at the PhD at the University of Life <laughs> and um, and again you know my PhD is um, you know you know and, and my PhD is not any fancy um, a degree or from any fancy college. But my PhD, I graduate from P is for purpose, and H, and you know, for hungry, and then D for determined. Because my life is really focused. That is, I'm very purposeful. I'm very determined, and I'm very hungry. I receive a lot from from everybody, and I come from a place of having such a passion and they deeply fall in love with life. Um, and I want to have, as my life is, I want to be just like a conduit, to, to be a channel, to do what I can, to, you know, I want my life, every day, the way I live, to be an expression of my gratitude for all I receive. And I would love to have that because I I looking for a platform to work with women to empower them to do what to inspire them to do what inspire them and it, to it, see because it, to me very important that for them to to see themselves as a the inventor. Because, uh, you know, through our life, we, through our different transformation, we became a, a different role and a different person. But again, the court, we still who we are. Um, what keeps you going? I think that knowing that um, life is precious, and I give a second chance in yeah, and I, and I appreciate that, and uh, whoever grant me the second chance, and I know for sure that my father have um, um, sacrificed for me, with that, um, you know, I, I just want to be the best version of her, that for my father to be proud of, and for the universe, universe who had one time give me the second chance, thinking that I did the right thing. Patron, our hometown talent and treasure. Thank you so much for being here.
and happy Memorial Day to everyone out there listening. And thank you to all the veterans for all that you do. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Hometown Talents and Treasures.